Okay, good afternoon. I am Dr. Samin Sharma from CSI TV in uh, Mumbai in the CSI conference. Uh, I am a director of uh, interventional cardiology at Mount Sinai Medical Center. And uh, on my right side is uh, uh, Dr. Ashok Seth, who is the chairman and most expert interventionist of India. And on my left side is Dr. Upendra Kaul, uh, who is now is the director of uh, cardiovascular center science at Batra Hospital. The purpose today is talk about the Indian stents. And I'm so privileged to share this uh, dais with these two expert uh, Indian interventionists and we'll give you some glimpses of uh, what is going on at present, where the Indian stents uh, stand in many of the trials. So one of them, uh, I would start with the talent trial because the trial which really made a big headline. So, uh, Ashok, you were there at uh, TCT uh, the, in San Diego, and the talent trial was presented. And it actually, for our Indians, you know, I am actually in America for uh, 30 plus years, but I always, anything comes out from India really uh, boosts my uh, further enthusiasm and uh, blood and uh, the confidence. So, a lot of, uh, there was big noise about uh, the talent trial and it was subsequently also covered by a lot of media. Can you just tell all our viewers here what it was all about and what was special about this particular stent, which I know was uh, targeted against uh, our most popular uh, stent in the USA? So, so you're, you're right, Samin. I think it was a great day for India. There's no question. It was a pride to see the amount of exposure, the amount of uh, publicity which this, this uh, and the amount of attention which India got from this important study. And uh, it's rare when a large pivotal study gets presented on the main forum, on the late breaking trials at the biggest meeting in the world. And a very scientifically done study. So it made us proud, it not just made us proud, because the stent is very good and that it lived up to the expectations of being a very good stent against a very powerful comparator. The comparator is considered the gold standard of stents at the moment. And this, the, our Indian stent, uh, Supracore, Supraflex, was randomized in a very prospective manner, in a very scientifically designed study a multi-center prospective study done between Europe and, and uh, England. Uh, and what it showed was non-inferiority. In fact, it showed that it was as good as the best in class of the drug eluting stents which we've been using uh, of the West for years. So that was one. The fact that it was a great study was the other one. And it made us proud to have such a stent. The, the, the fascinating aspect of the stent by the way, I would still say that this was actually a second generation or a first generation stent of the company. And that also matched up to the best in class stent. And we can imagine that at the moment we're using the next gen of that company and it can only be performing better than the second gen stent that we actually use. So it was, it was quite a... Uh, quite, quite remarkable. Quite remarkable. So uh, Dr. Upendra Kaul, uh, you, I'm sure you used all uh, the stents. Uh, uh, Superflex and so tell us, uh, we'll come back to the trial once a little later. Your personal experience, you use the Superflex in your clinical practice, you use Zions and many others, uh, Promus, Synergy and so. So how did you, before the trial came, the results came, what was your mindset and what is your uh, feeling that how good the stent was, was it faring as good as, of course there was a, not a label that was americanly tested. Uh, the term or trial, tested in a randomized trial, but how was your feeling over the years on that stent? Well, Supraflex has been one of the very good stents for many years. It uh, first came into the market seven years ago, and the beauty of the stent, it is ultra thin stent. You know, this is the time when we're talking of ultra thin stents. It's 60 microns. It is chromium cobalt. It has a biodegradable polymer and its crossing profile is just 0.039. Zions, the latest stand, the Zion Sierra now has matched its crossing profile of 0.039. And other thing is that 
the strut thickness of 60 microns is uniform. Small vessels, large vessels, up to 4 millimeter. The other small, you know, this uh, ultra thin stent is, as you know, Orsairo, which again is a very well acclaimed stent. It has gone through many studies like bioflow studies, has shown lower MIs because of low strut thickness. But between 3, 3.5 and 4, it becomes 80 millimicron. So that is the beauty of this stent. So we thought that having got a very good share in India, 11,000 to 12,000 supraflex stents are used in India every month. And uh, Zion's about 12,000. So it's very close. Other stents are other Indian stents like Yukon and uh, Merrill stent. So we thought that uh, we should need to have a randomized study because we have a registry of supraflex with OCT and everything else in 250 patients showing a very good nominal late loss and a good healing pattern. So we thought that it needs to be done in a prospective multicentric studies and the most powerful part of the study was that it was all comers, acute MI, grafts, left mains, no exclusion criteria. So this was done in 1400 patients and as you know, as Ashok said, it came out to be as uh, equivalent with a 4% margin you know, of uh, non-inferiority. It came as equivalent uh, with the strength thrombosis of uh, 0.5 or 0.6% in both. The device-oriented composite endpoints, which is the standard these days, was equivalent. So it fared so well that uh, we have decided now to go in for a superiority study which is uh, the real thing. And okay. we have also decided to go in diabetics because if you know, the freedom study against CABG was done with the first generation stents. It was Texas and Cypher. Stents are not available and we know the limitations of that. So that message that in all settings, in diabetics, surgery is better, this again has to be shown in a prospective study and we're planning that also. What is interesting about this is that the first uh, inhuman study was actually done with a stent called Supracore by myself, the first inhuman study of 250 patients. Even at that time, and this is we talking about uh, now 10 years ago, 11 years ago, uh, the results were amazing. For the first time I saw an Indian stent behaving dramatically, and we, uh, that, again, that study was all comers, it was the first inhuman study, and yet, we were seeing no restenosis, and for the first time, we we're seeing long lesions, triple vessel disease, tented with this, supracore, and doing very well. So it's extremely promising, but it also suggests one more thing. Two things have come out from this. Firstly, that our devices are good. They just needed to be proven in a scientific manner, and that was very important. And the credibility mattered, not for this country, but it mattered across the world. Yes. The second is that it was that this company was able to do an immaculate study against the best comparator, and that again is a first time I would say for a for an Indian stent. Uh, if we get more of this, and I believe that, I mean we can generalize this as Indian stent, but I would say this Indian stent is particularly good. Now, are all Indian stents good? Probably they are, but they need to go through this Same sort of process. randomized study to actually, for us to be confident about their use in our patients and for the world to be confident about the technology that India develops, which is of extremely high standard. Other things, I mean, is, uh, as we all know, that the annual attrition rate after one year, after angioplasty, whatever stent you use, is 3% per year, which right. is alarmingly high. So one has to see what can be done to reduce it. One is a very good medical treatment so that the other parts of the vessel remain healthy. But what can be done to the stent? Uh, the best thing could be because whether the stent is a biodegradable polymer stent or a stent with a durable polymer and the science has shown that good durable polymers are very good and sometimes they may be better because it, they always are thromboresistant layer there. But one thing is their metal if it remains in the vessel wall is going to corrode, is going to produce, have, leave ions, which can produce uh, subtle, gentle inflammation, which can produce problems later. Uh, this was the direction for the BVS, 
Unfortunately, yeah. BVS had a problem. I still feel that that is the way to go about, although, you know, 150, 160 million uh, microns is not the way to go. And in that direction also, I think everybody is trying that, although the process has become slow after Ebert, uh, you know, lost its heart with this uh, very thick stents. So, design matters. I think the design of the stent matters. And uh, lower the strut thickness is good, but I don't think strut thickness can go Beyond a less than 30, point. less than 60, because you need some radial strength, you need some pushability, you need some conformability. So that is the way to go. So I think the million dollar question is going to be, uh, because Zion still has a lot of promise, because we are just showing non-inferiority. So we need to find out whether with a biodegradable polymer, a 60 micron stent will be equivalent to a 60 micros, micron stent with a durable polymer. So Both have to be equivalent because, because if th uh, the thickness matters, then lower is better. So that is the way one possibly should go till the time we get back to metal goes away. Yes, sir. So, <clears throat> look, you know, talking about that, uh, it is going to be extremely difficult in the present era for any stent to show superiority. All these stents have become so good. They are getting all thin struts, they are actually getting the every aspect perfect. Yeah. We are into third generation devices. And I doubt that we'll ever be able to show superiority over one device over the other. And therefore you're right, the tack has to be totally different. And yeah. I do believe bars operable scaffolds still hold the biggest yes. promise. Uh, thinner struts and the design characteristics yeah. which are being changed are perhaps what we've been looking for and there's no doubt the older needed to change into new. And that is going to be the future, the disappearing. But one other aspect which I actually say is, even this of non-inferiority of, uh, of uh, supra flex over zines is a huge thing and I'll tell you why. Yeah. It's huge not just because it's non-inferior and it's an Indian cell, but cost now matters. So yeah. what's the next differentiator? For, for across the world. The next differentiator is it's if you've got equivalency, cost. if it's as good, if it delivers well, and if it treats well, then why are we going to pay twice more for a different stem? And that is the things which needed to be proven. And I think that's the bigger one of the big steps forward. Yeah. Because if we can't change in the direction of results into non-superiority, then there is a superiority in it being less expensive. There is a superiority in the way it's been developed and made available. So, and it's a superiority in the way it can be available to the masses in the country. So I think that's the big, big step forward. So and, and this gives the confidence to the Indian operators because, you know, many of us rightly had a feeling that, you know, the American stents and European stents started that long, long back. This is a new stent, uh, you know, just being, you know, patriotic doesn't make, a, you know, that much of an impact. Till the time you show that you're bloody very good. You are doing the same thing. And cost effective, although we have a stent cap, price cap there. But you know, Indian stents are able to get into the market with a little more margin than the American stents. And the Zion Sierra and all that are not going to come. So we need to improve the deliverability of these stents also now. Stent is good, but deliverability has to be improved. And in our this trial, a talent, uh, because I was the co-chairman, I have the details of the trial. One of the factors was there that the device success was lower. Was 97.5 versus close 94. to 99 yeah. in that. And one of the reasons was that, because this was a European trial, was that if you're not able to push it, they were going back to their familiar stent. Let us use our familiar stent. So that could also have affected that because they didn't try to push it harder because they said, why get into the trouble? We have another stent lying on the shelf through there. So, but all said and done, some of the things like shaft crack, kinking and other things have been worked out during the period of the trial also. So the next generation of the Supraflex stent is also focusing on how to make the delivery system slicker. And the newer generation stent, because everybody is getting into Avrolimus, so is a stent called Tetriflex, which is again 60 microns, but has Avrolimus as the drug, because Avrolimus is becoming more popular. Although, I think 
Serolimus yeah, and Everolimus uh, doesn't make a difference. And we have, we have done a 50 patient uh, intravascular, you know, the OCT study, and they've shown that at three months and six months, the healing is perfect. It is not uh, 0 0.1, it is about 0 0.2, 0 0.3, which is very safe. And all the data analyzed by Alex Abizad in Brazil, and uh, you know, that gives much more and more confidence. So that's what I'm trying to say that Indian stents have got into the milieu of testing it rigorously and showing it in publications and showing it to the world. So let's so that is the let's, way let's to go hope about that it. this study gives an impetus for firstly more Indian stents, and there are good companies. We know that there are good companies who created good stents in India, other companies. Let's hope that this gives impetus and excitement to others to do such large scale studies. We understand that it costs money. It's a huge investment, but that huge investment is for India's credibility, growth, research, science, as well as it would be obviously for the sales across the world. And the second aspect is that it gives impetus to the industry in the country itself. Yeah. After all, you're talking about made in India. And for us, that made in India is always going to be a pride. Yeah. India is one country which has survived on what's come from the West. In a way, yes, they survived because those were the proven sins. They'd done large studies. They had done long-term studies. They had done pivotal studies. And they had huge data. So there was nothing wrong in that. But now's the time for us to transform that. And that's the made in India spirit. I never want to believe. You know, there's always one thing. Okay, made in India, cheese a use karo. And I say, I never want to believe that what I put into me, I should be able to put into my patients what I would put into me. And unfortunately, uh, unless we make our quality parameters so robust that we can rely, it is studies like this which will make us rely on what is being produced here. Because unfortunately, our quality parameters in this country are still not as uniformly robust as one would have liked. And it's very important to prove or disprove a hypothesis. <laughs> like uh, Samin, you may be remembering that tax stent was still considered to be a good stent for diabetics yeah. based upon large meta-analysis of Greg Stone till the time we did the tuxedo study and showed that Avrolimus stent was better there. Yeah. And that was the demise of taxes. And also in the talent study, the other thing which I'll say was a little shortcoming is that diabetics were 21% because that's the typical European population. We have diabetics as 30, 30, 30, 30, 35%. So we need to also see that it performs equally well in a diabetic patient population. So there are you know many things we have got from the talent study and it has given us the impetus. It's being published in Lancet that again gives us a credibility that an Indian stent for the first time coming to the Lancet as a full paper. So yeah, I think uh, the uh, positives are many. Clearly the excellent study done uh, and by the uh, Indian manufacturers, it's a pride for us and more importantly that it was proven scientifically better. And since then, further designs even have been made as uh, Dr. Seth pointed out that these were the earlier generation and of course the subsequently uh, will even give rise to a better result. So with that note, we conclude our uh, today's uh, this uh, discussion on the talent uh, study which uh, used the Supraflax Indian made serolumor uh, um, saluting stent against the top uh, most commonly used stent Zions and the device related outcomes were identical except the crossability procedural success was slightly lower but that was by using the old generation stent. With that note, we I hope you enjoyed this discussion and uh, wish you a very good uh, evening and uh, enjoy the CSI conference and try to get, make a best use of it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Samin. Thank you very much.